guys, welcome back. Um, tonight I'm going to read lesson one, Early China, and I don't have my pictures of the text tonight, so I'm just going to read it from my book here, and you can follow along. We're on page 117, The Birth of Chinese Cult Civilization. It's a culture. The Birth of Chinese Civilization. Um, some of our terms to know are warlord, aristocrat, ancestor, pictograph, ideograph, bureaucracy, hereditary, mandate of heaven, and Tao. Okay. Um, you see a map, and this is China. It's to the east of India. You see India right there. Um, the Himalayan mountain range flows into both these countries. And we're going to be focusing on the Yellow River, which is um, close to the top. If you can find the Korean Peninsula and go slightly left, and it's right there. The Yellow River is kind of the northeastern part of China. Okay. We are around 1750 BC, which is around the time of the New Kingdom of Egypt. So this is actually towards the end of the Egyptian kingdoms where Egypt actually gets taken over by the Kush kingdoms. So um, this is actually... Their dynasty begins as the Egyptians were ascending. So that's pretty interesting. Okay. All right. So let's turn the page to 118. The land of China. Okay. Two powerful rivers have helped shape Chinese history. The Huanghe or Yellow River flows across China. As it flows, it carries large amounts of rich soil. The soil separates along the spreads along the river banks. This makes the land more fertile or a high quality for farming. Farmers along the Hoang He were able to grow more food. However, the Hoang He often floods. Millions of people have died because of these floods. The Chen Yang or Yangtze River is another important waterway in China. Like the Wang He, the Chenyang Jiang provides rich soil for farming. It also serves as a way of trade and transportation. Mountains and deserts cover much of China, just like we saw last week that a lot of latitude has similar types of geography and environments. They are difficult to cross, acting like walls around the country. These natural barriers lift limited contact between China and other civilizations. The high mountains and vast deserts helped China develop a unique culture. Chinese civilization was different from other civilizations. Number one, how did the mountains and deserts affect China's civilization? Number two, how did rivers help China's civilizations develop? So those are both in that first part here. And it's also in this neat little graph they have here where it says rivers, mountains, and deserts. The geographic features of river, the effect on Chinese civilization was that it, it provided rich soil for Chinese farmers, caused many deaths by flooding, and was used as waterways for trade and transportation. The mountains formed a barrier, which was difficult for invaders to cross, and it made China... It made it possible for China to develop a unique culture and civilization because they didn't have any interactions like Egypt and Mesopotamia and the Indian civilizations. Like they were all kind of by each other and they interacted with one another. China was completely separated for so long. Um, the first Chinese dynasty, a dynasty is a line of rulers who belong to the same family. Historians believe that the first Chinese dynasty was the Shang. The Shang dynasty began around 1750 BC. Number three, mark in the text. In the text, circle the name of what historians believe to be the first Chinese dynasty. 
Ruins of walls and buildings show that the Shang built the first cities in China. One, of, one was the royal capital at Anyang. A palace and temple stood at the city center. I'm on page 119 now. Public buildings and homes of government officials were nearby. Beyond these stood workshops and other homes. They're talking about the the way that the city is set up. And the way this city is set up is there's a palace or temple in the middle, buildings and homes, and then workshops in the lower level of society's people's homes. Number 19, page number... Back on page 119. The king was the political, religious, and military leader of Shang, China. Over time, the Shang conquered nearby areas. Kings began to rule more land and people. Warlords helped the Shang kings control territories throughout the country. A warlord is a military leader who has his own army. So, like, the Egyptian king was the head of the religion and politics and partially the army but in this situation the king was everything was completely in control of all aspects of government life and so that's pretty interesting number four says what is a warlord that's in bold right there number five which group of people made up most of china's society let's look Warlords and other royal officials were aristocrats. Aristocrats are people in the upper class of society. Their wealth comes from the land that they own. Most Chinese people, however, were farmers. Just like everywhere else at this time, most people were farming. They farmed the land owned by aristocrats. A small number were merchants, artisans, and enslaved people. People in Shang, China, worshipped many gods, polytheistic, believed the gods would bring good or bad fortune, honored their ancestors or long-dead family members, believed their ancestors would bring them good luck, and made offerings to the gods and their ancestors. Number six, what is the difference between a pictograph and an ideograph? That's coming up, but I think it's really interesting that we haven't, I don't think there is any other, well... I'm not going to say that, but out of all the ancient civilizations, this is the only one that had ancestor worship. And it's still a big part of their culture today. If you've seen Mulan, have you seen Mulan? If you haven't seen Mulan, you probably didn't watch Mulan because it's amazing. But Mulan demonstrates this very well of the, of the ancestor culture and praying to your ancestors because they are already in heaven. They're right by God. They can help you out, right? Kings, back on page 119, kings looked to their ancestors for help in making important decisions. They had priests scratch questions on oracle bones, such as, will I win the battle? Priests heated the bones until they cracked. Answers were found in the patterns of the cracks. Early Chinese writing used pictographs and ideographs. Pictographs are characters that represent objects. Ideographs are another kind of character they link two or more pictographs to express an idea. So a pictograph is like, this means soup. And then an ideograph is like, I eat soup. Number seven says, why did Shane Kings have questions scratched on oracle bones? Well, it was right there above the pictograph and ideograph. The Zhao, 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 the Zhao, China's longest dynasty. According to legend, the last Shang ruler was a wicked tyrant. Rebels overthrew the Shang government and declared the new dynasty called the Zhao. The Zhao ruled China for more than 800 years. The king led the government. He was helped by a bureaucracy. A bureaucracy is a group of elected officials who selected, not elected, selected officials who do different government jobs. I'm on page 120. Under Zhao rulers, excuse me. 
Under the Zhao rulers, China grew larger. The king divided the country into territories. Each territory was ruled by an aristocrat. When the aristocrat died, his son or another member of the family governed the territory. This means the positions were hereditary. So hereditary is, I die, my son gets my house. Not some rando or some random person. And hereditary is kind of like where the kings or queens, whenever they die, their son or daughter takes over. It's not an elected thing. It's not like I we all voted for this person to be in charge. It's because they were born into that family that they're in charge. So that's what hereditary means. You, you might think like a hereditary disease or a hereditary gene. It's something that's passed down through family lines. In this case, property and people. So that's fun. Zhao kings believed Zhao kings believed that the gods gave them the right to rule China. This idea is known as the mandate of heaven. The mandate said that the king must rule by the proper way known as Tao. The king's duty was to honor and please the gods. And this is kind of similar to India, right? During the Zhao dynasty, new technologies helped farmers. The Chinese developed better ways to bring water to their fields. With a better irrigation system, farmers were able to grow more food than ever before. Under the Zhao, China's trade expanded also. Silk from the Zhao dynasty has been found as far as Greece. And we're going to be talking about that in our DBQ this week. The Greece, I mean, the silk trade. It's very interesting. If you don't know how silk is made, Google it because it's really weird. It's like, it's wild. Like, go right after this and be like, hey, I need to figure out how silk is made because it's going to blow your little mind. Um, the aristocrats became more powerful under the Zhao. They began to ignore the king. They took control of the their own territory or states. The aristocrats began to fight each other for power. These battles lasted nearly 200 years. This time in Chinese history is known as the period of warring states. Number eight, what does hereditary mean? Well, I did that earlier. And do you have the definitions on the other page, 117? So... Number nine, what technology was developed during China's Zhao dynasty? Boop, it's right there. We're not doing number 10, but we are doing the check for understanding. Some of y'all skip that. Don't skip that. List two different landforms and explain how each one helped shape Chinese history. You're going to go back to page 118, that chart on page 118. That's where you need to go, okay? And the second one says, list one accomplishment of the Shang Dynasty and one accomplishment of the Zhao Dynasty. Well, the Zhao Dynasty is on page 120. It's that right there. And then the Shang Dynasty. Um, I mean, I guess you can say the cities were an accomplishment of the Shang Dynasty, the first cities of China. It's on page 118. So, Okay, so bonus time. Bonus time. So on the bottom of page 120, you see underneath there you've got room under that check for understanding. I want you to tell me where does silk come from? Like real silk. Not like fake silk, like real silk. I want you to tell me right there where does silk come from and I will give you some bonus points whenever I take this up for a grade. Um, tune in later or tomorrow for Lesson 2 and 3. Thanks for watching, and I will see you tomorrow.